Okay, continuing on with the countdown, part two of four. And uh, once again, uh, nothing new here. If you've been with me for a while, it's really just the same shit, different day. Uh, but in an effort to attract new sports card collectors to the channel, I figured I'd uh, go through the collection. And um, I think, like I said in the last video, I haven't done this in in this format in a couple of years i've kind of done other things with like um i think top football cards or top you know half point grade cards whatever but anyway this one comes in at uh number 125 this garrett cole so i don't know i don't know if this belongs here um this is number out of 50 it's a gold refractor i think i have it um i'm not sure what i have this bad let me check real quick See if I can find that real quick. Yeah, I got some random value here I assigned of seven hundred and seventy-seven dollars. Um, I don't know, um, but that's what I put that at. And I guess depending on the kind of year he's having, obviously uh, the value is going to fluctuate. But you don't see a lot of those move, and so therefore it's hard to really get a sense of what they would would go for. Here's a um, Here's another tough one to value. It's a 1972 Terry Bradshaw second year card that I have in an 8.5 grade. And um, the pop on an 8.5 is very low. Um, yeah. And so the best way for me to kind of establish a price on that, and I've mentioned it before, is I'll just take like the price of an eight, if there is one that's current, and then a price of a nine, which pretty rare also, not as rare as an 8.5. And then the delta between the two, I'll just take like 25% or so and tack it on to the, the lower grade to come to a price for that one. So sort of a, um, I guess, conservative way to establish a value for a card that you don't know exactly what it would go for. Here's a Lemieux rookie, PSA 9. And um, this is part of a series of cards that I picked up. You know, I, I did take a little bit of a break from collecting. It was, what, 2021 where things were just really crazy. So I think from like January to maybe April of that year, May, I just, I quit the cards. I, I started doing more comic books and honestly it didn't really make a difference. Those that I purchased also <clears throat> suffered the same fate uh, as a, essentially all collectibles during the uh, post-COVID boom. Dropped like a rock. Um, but yeah, Lemieux here. And then I got this uh, tobacco card, Nap Lajue throwing. Bought this a long time ago. I mean like, Probably almost 20 years ago, it was like 230 bucks. Um, should have bought more cards from this particular era back then. Um, so that's some of the stuff I was buying. Nice Jackie Robinson here, 1954 tops. Very modest PSA four grade. And so that brings us to card number 120. Roger Maris, rookie. And so I, I showed this card this year, I think a few months back. I had done a series of videos where I was doing like um, uh, top, um, whatever, PSA 8.5, 7.5s, 6.5s, and then like the best of the rest half grades, 5.5 and below. I was able to cull together enough material to put together some content there. Um, this may be valued a little higher now. This guy had one hell of a postseason. Freddie Freeman. Tops gold. 2011. It's another T206. Christie. Probably bought along the same time as this one. I think it was in the 2000s. Maybe the the mid 2000s and at the time the 1.5 was my budget this is like i think 400 dollars or three to 400 bucks so that's kind of like what i was doing um when i was purchasing cars I and mean, my budgets obviously have changed over the years um <laughs> this one blew up i don't know what's going to happen this guy is still incredible talent still very young i don't know what you know when i bought it, it was like 200 dollars 200 Twenty to two hundred fifty dollars, um, and then I think it did go up to like something like five thousand bucks or something. It's just nuts, you know. Um, now it's, I think I got it under a grand. 
Still a nice car, though. I do like the blue refractors. This one, I think, has seen a big... So this might be mis misplaced here at, like, whatever this one, 115, I guess. It's Bo Jackson. This image was used a couple times uh, here and then on the um, the Donruss Rookies uh, boxed set also. And this is the regular version, the non-Tiffany, which is certainly more valuable. But again, they have that yellowing uh, sort of effect, which I'm not a big fan of. Jeter, 8.5, huge card, huge card. I think the nine was like 25 grand, <laughs> which is just absurd. I mean, just $25,000. I mean, who paid that, you know? I guess probably somebody who paid that, somebody that $25,000 to them is like, you know, 50 bucks to me. Like, yeah, whatever. I, uh, <laughs> you know, if you've lost that, who cares, right? Um, but yeah, really tough card to get. Uh, I went with the 8.5 because um, I had an 8 that PSA rejected the first time I sent it in, and then it passed the second time and got a got the eight. But while I was uh, in the absence of actually having one graded, I purchased the eight five, and then I sent that that uh, eight in after that, and it's now I have two of these. Um, this one should be higher. Um, this one I have at like eight hundred and fifty bucks because um, that's what I paid for it in the BVG four point five slab. But maybe a month or so ago, Greg Morris had. A very similar, actually near identical three, nicely centered, uh, that sold on eBay for like a twelve hundred dollars or something like that. So having said that, this probably should go a little higher in the in the rankings. But uh, I put these values together back in <clears throat> back in July. So um, mantle sixty eight tops PSA seven. Pete Rose. This one, um, I don't know, really nice 7.5. These 71s are, as everybody knows, incredibly tough. Incredibly tough with those black borders and the chipping that's also apparent on these things. It really stands out, too, you know, when you get that white showing up against the black contrast. So Mr. Rose, and this was a, uh, this is definitely a COVID card. Um... Because I thought it was ridiculous that at one time it was selling for like ten thousand, eight to ten thousand bucks, I think, for this. The top's gold. <laughs> um, Shaquille O'Neal. I mean, it's a great card for a rookie card. I mean, nice image, um, you know, and the gold does add a little bit of uh, gravitas to the uh, junky '92 tops era. Um, but certainly, certainly, <laughs> ten thousand dollars. Oh, God, I should have sold the thing. <laughs> should have sold it and bought like a Walter Johnson Cracker Jack or something like that, which were a lot cheaper back then. And, uh, in fact, that's one of my target cards. And, you know, I have five target cards. They're vintage, and they're all hard to find, except for that uh, Churchman Ruth. Easy to find, but hard to find centered. Um, so that's going to be a very long process, considering that what's involved in getting some of those that I have targeted. Here's an interesting card I thought was really cool. This um, on demand that looks like a 78 Tops rookie card. And you've got Soto, Cunha, Dustin Fowler, and Alex Verdugo. And this has a limited print run of something around like 400. Um, so I thought it was just really cool because you had Acuna and Soto featured on the same card, the same rookie card. So that's what drew me to that this one's one of my favorite vintage cards here this Barra from uh, 1950 Bowman centering is uh, really good I lucked out on that and so this is a favorite amongst many collectors just this nice nice image and a cool card Yogi Barra another vintage one here Got a little vein of vintage coming up. 57 tops, Hank Aaron. Just a random. And, you know, I guess I was probably targeting that grade more so than the card because the centering, I don't think I would do this again. You know, it's not centered the way I, uh, I think nowadays prefer to see. Years ago, I was like buying the grade, buying the grade. <clears throat> and then um, over time, I started to kind of change my 
strategy a little bit. This is a nicely centered mage from 1968 tops. PSA 8. Another COVID card. <clears throat> this one. Man. I, uh, I got to see what I have this valued at. Uh, Trout Rookie. I remember having some post-purchase anxiety <clears throat> or remorse. Because I paid like three and a quarter for this. And then it like went down to like 270 uh, And this is going back like six years, right? Um, and then it went up to... Uh, I remember Fu 3112 made a video at a national. Maybe it was 2018 or 2019. And some dealer had like just a display of these. And it was like 900 bucks a piece. And um, that was high then. But this one... I think it got up to around $5,000 at its peak. And now, oh, let me see, what do I have this one at? I'll take a quick look. All right, so it appears I have valued this one, or back in July, I should say, I valued this one at $939. And I don't think, <clears throat> I don't think it's worth that. I haven't checked, but I mean, he got injured again um, after that at some point. And um, yeah, it's what a shame this trout card still an important card um but man that thing go, get real crazy three two three two one all right coming in at <clears throat> card number 105 is another mantle just a mundane mantle from 67 not my most it's not one of my favorite card images of him but Obviously necessary to complete the run. 104 is the Magera, Magera, is Miguel Cabrera, tops chrome traded. Um, one of his better rookie cards. I think the autograph version is going to be the premier, the premier choice for his card, I guess. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but still a solid card to own. The tops chrome traded. PSA 10. This one's probably, I mean, I don't know. This one's probably worth more than what I have it at here at card number 103. It's made like $1,000 or something like that. Um, or maybe it settled back down to that range. Because, again, this was back in July. So, But he was having a great season. So nothing really changed until, <laughs> until the World Series fifth inning of Game 5. Um Aaron Judge. This one's tough to, really hard to comp. In fact, I actually found one on uh, eBay that had sold like privately because it was like the listing had been ended by the seller or whatever. It was mislabeled, you know, one of those deals. So he probably sold it offline. So I reached out and said, hey, listen, I, I have this card. Would you sell it for? Because I have no idea how to value it. And he said he sold his for a thousand bucks. And so that's what I used for this one. This, um, Finest Mystery Jordan Borderless. It's not a refractor, just a, just an insert card. Jordan inserts are very popular. And card number 101 in the collection is Walter Payton, rookie. Just a great looking rookie card of a great player. Nice vintage football card here. As can, I, I assume it's considered vintage. Uh, 1976. Um. And so that will do it. So that's cards 125 to cards 101. And again, I've got uh, two more videos I'm going to throw out there. Um, you know, another 50 cards, 25 cards each video leading up to at some point. We're dragging our asses on this one. But that uh, collaborative video that we've talked about uh, and I mentioned last time between Joe and Josh and Mike. Um, <laughs> one of these days, maybe before the end of the calendar year, we'll be able to pull that off. But we shall see. In the meantime, as always, thanks for watching. I will talk to you later.